let's apply the techniques that we learned in solving trigonometric integral integrals with arbitrary powers to some explicit integrands here. So we want to find the integrals. The first one is sine cubed of x, cosine of x dx. Now, for something like this, the, the typical formula says, okay, well, one of them's odd, the other one's odd, so we need to do that power reduction formula. And that's kind of true, but also the key on a lot of these is don't work harder than you have to. In this particular case, if one of them has already been reduced to single power, right, so when we're doing this, we want one trig function to be in a single power, and then all of the other trig functions can be whatever they want, but we need if we have one cosine alone and a bunch of sines, or one sine alone and a bunch of cosines, that's okay. What we can do on something like this is use a simple u substitution. We can say, okay, u is sine of x, du is cosine of x dx. And by using that substitution, we simply get u cubed du. We don't have to overthink this. Which leaves us with 1 fourth sine to the fourth x plus c. Right, so in this particular case, this is a really good example of not overthinking your problem and working way harder than you have to. Now, in this one, we're going to have to actually apply the methods. And not only are we going to apply them, we have to be a little more careful because you notice in this one we have a square root. We, in, when we started to talk about this in the methodology, there was no square root. It was just, all right, it's even or it's odd. So in this particular case, what you want to do is you want to say, okay, well, I know that this is odd. So since I know this is odd, I can be manipulating these, and I don't have to worry about the fact that this is, is a square root. I know that may sound weird, but the key here is that once you identify that one of them is odd, you can, you can kind of ignore what's going on over here and just focus on what's going on over here. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to need to make those equal. Now, you could actually do this problem if they were not, um, they were not the same but it would be very complicated. It would actually be more complicated than you think. And so um, we're going to avoid that for right now. Uh, if you did, you could use like a, a double angle formula or a, a angle addition formula. But that was really just a mistake on my part, so I apologize. So for this particular case, this thing is odd. So we're just going to start reducing it. We split off one of the cosines. Now, actually, even before this, I'm going to do something that I didn't talk about in our original setup, but I'm going to go ahead and do a U substitution. Now, you don't have to do a U substitution at the beginning, but I like to because I kind of hate dealing with like 7 thetas. So I'm going to do a first a U 7 theta, which is the same thing as 1 seventh U equals theta. So so 1 seventh du equals d theta. What that does is it takes this original integral and just makes it, you know, a little clean, a little more clean, right? I don't have to worry about two thetas or three thetas, just got a u there. Now what I need to do is I need to take, this is an odd one, so we're going to split on this. I'm going to say 1 seventh cosine u cosine squared u cosine squared u square root of sine of u du. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. You know, you know that this is 1 plus 4, so I could either get the 4 from 2 and 2, or probably better to write it as cosine squared u squared. But that's okay. It's all up to you. The next thing we want to do is we want to have just one dangling cosine and everything else be sines here. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity. So 
So we have cosine of u, 1 minus, so this cosine squared gets replaced with 1 minus sine squared. So now we have all these sines and one dangling cosine. This will allow us to make the substitution that is part of the trigonometric, uh, trigonometric, trigonometric integral method. So I'm going to say t equals sine, so dt is cosine u du. So what that allows us to do is say, okay, we've got cosine u du. That's now a dt. The 1 7th is unchanged. I'm just going to keep dropping my marker. So one, so I've sine squared here, so that's going to be now 1 minus t squared squared square root of t dt. Okay, so yikes, you know, we're still kind of still trying to figure this thing out. But now we have everything in terms of polynomials. So instead of t to the square root of t, I'm going to write that as like t to the one half. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to say, okay, that's 1 7th, 1 minus t squared, squared, t to the 1 half dt. Then I can multiply this whole thing out. I can say, okay, well, 1 minus 7, 1, whoops, integral, 1 minus 2t squared plus t to the 4th t to the 1 half dt. So I just did the FOIL method here. And then I'm going to distribute this t to the 1 half. So now that I have t to the 1 half minus 2t to the 5 halves plus t to the 9 halves dt. So now that I have that, I can just use the power rule. I just add, you know, I have a 1 7th out here. Add 1 to the power, so that makes that t to the 3 halves. Divide by that power. So, you know, I have 2 thirds. And then add 1 to the power, that makes that 7 halves. When you divide, that would be like 2 sevenths, but I've already got a 2, so that's going to be 4 sevenths. And then, similarly, this is going to be 2 elevenths t to the 11 halves plus c. Now, we have t's, but we didn't start in t's. We started actually in thetas. And we didn't start in, uh, you know, we, we went through two substitutions. So for every t, I have to convert it to sine of u. And for every u, I have to convert it to 7 theta. So realistically, t is sine of 7 theta. That allows us not to have to make a double back substitution. We can just go back to, so I'm going to distribute this 1 7th, so that gets me 221 sine 7 theta to the 3 halves minus 4 forty ninths sine 7 theta to the 7 halves plus 277th sine 7 theta to the 11 halves plus C. And so, I mean, that's a fairly nasty answer. I don't envy that answer, um, but it is it is kind of the way to do it. Which leaves us with hopefully enough board space to get to this final problem. Sine cubed x over the square root of cosine of x dx. So that's weird, right? Like it's kind of the same idea, but now we have a square root on the bottom. This is actually very, very similar to what we do here. It's very, very close. Closer than you might think. Because really... That's all we've got going on there. Now I'm going to swap my purples.
that purple is just like it draws fat notices so we're gonna run out of room so in this particular case we do the same idea here we say okay that one's odd so I'm going to split on the odds So I have sine x, sine squared x, times cosine x to the negative one-half. So I want this sine to be alone, so I need to convert everything else to cosines. So I'm going to say, okay, so now what I have is I have a dangling sine, I have one here, and then everything else is cosines. That allows me to take my u to be cosine of x. du is negative sine of x dx. So then when I make the substitution, I'm going to get a negative out front, but I get negative. So the sine x dx gets absorbed, so that's going to be my du. So I have 1 minus u squared times u to the negative one-half du. Then when I distribute that, it's going to be... So I'm going to pull in the negative as well. I'm going to get negative u to the negative one-half plus u to the positive three-halves du. Right, so that distributes to get the negative one-half. The negatives cancel. 2 minus a half is 3 halves. So then we can apply the power rule. We say, okay. So we add 1 to the power. So that's going to get us a positive 1 half. When we divide by that, it's kind of like multiplying by 2. So I get negative 2u to the 1 half plus 2 fifths u to the 5 halves plus c. But again, we didn't start in u's. We started in x's. So, or started in sine x's, you know, so 2 cosine of x to the 1 half plus 2 fifths cosine of x to the 5 halves plus c. So another way to write this is if I pull out a one, like cosine of x to the one half is the square root of cosine of x. So another way you might see this written is something like this. Square root of cosine of x. So that takes care of that one. So I have negative two, and then I have two fifths cosine squared x. Let's see. So that's because that's a one-half power, that's a two, two and a half is five halves. So you see that, that way it's kind of a little more in terms of standard things. We don't typically like arbitrary powers if we can help it, but you know, it, it, sometimes there's no way around it. So that's sort of an introduction to this. We're going to do several more examples uh, of, the, of cosines and then we're going to get into different trig functions as well.